if I told you your imperfections were perfect, would any of you believe me? I mean, it's quite a profound statement to make, considering we're living in a time where everyone is trying to achieve perfection in order to get ahead in life. We all want to look good, because then we feel good. And we all want to be liked, because having a circle of many is much better than having a circle of none. But what if we can't be heard? What if we can't be heard? What if others are not receptive to our good qualities because of the way we speak? Well, I'm here today because I stutter. That's it, I stutter. You guys can all go home. <laughs> 70 minutes left, okay. Um, and the only time I don't stutter is when I'm sitting down in the barber shop getting my hair cut. Um, now, globally, there are 70 million stutterers in the world, and boys are four to five times more likely to stutter than girls. That tells me that one in 100 people stutter, which also means that there must be a few stutterers amongst you guys today. Where are you guys? But what exactly is a stutter? Stuttering is a speech impediment in which the flow of speech is interrupted by involuntary repetitions and prolonged sounds. So what that basically means is that we all sound a bit like that. Now, the worst thing about a stutter is that, unlike any other imperfection or flaw, stuttering is one that cannot be seen by the human eye. For example, if you see a man with a broken leg, you can tell straight away, that's why he walks like that. But when people hear stuttering for the first time, it's hard to put a label on exactly what they're hearing. So when I meet someone, when I meet someone for the first time, I tend to avoid words like, hello, or hey. Because as you'll probably notice, hate is unknown no for me. So I tend to substitute them with words like, what's up? Or I can sing the first word and it sounds a bit like this. Hello, is it me you're looking for? <laughs> but I'm not going to sing today because singing is not my forte. And when you meet someone for the first time, you don't want them walking away thinking, what a very old young chap. <laughs> now, members of my family stutter. In fact, almost every single one of my uncles stutter and a few of my aunts do too. And I recently discovered that Charles Darwin was a stutterer, and so was his grandfather, Erasmus Darwin. And the more you read into this, you begin to realize that perhaps a combination of genetics plus environmental factors come together, come together to determine who stutters and who doesn't. Now, everyone's different, but I believe that despite what holds us back, the 70 million of us who do stutter all have one thing in common. There's a strength in our weakness, and our imperfection is somewhat perfect. But before I could understand this, I had to learn the hard way. Because that's what life does to you, right? It beats you down and expects you to get back up. It doesn't give you the answers in a plate. It expects you to guard yourself and find them, no matter how dark those days may become. When I was growing up, the kids around me didn't really understand what a stutter was. I remember I must have been in year three or four and I had a crush on this girl, Jessica. Jessica came up to me one lunchtime and she, she popped the question. No, no, she didn't put that question. She, she came and asked me why I talk like this. Not like this, but like that. The stutter. She asked me why I talk like Porky Pig. And I stood there for what seemed like I was trying to digest the words that just come my way. I opened my mouth to reply, but nothing. Nothing. Nothing came out, and I felt like nothing. Now, what started off as a little bit of joke, I mean, it always does, quickly escalated into a routine of suffering and torment that would change my life forever. I didn't sound like any of the other kids around me, and it wasn't their fault, but they poked fun at me, and no matter how many times my mother came to school trying to intervene, the taunting still continued. She then decided to take me to speech therapy courses in the hope that I'd be cured, but I'm really sorry, Mum, for all the time and money wasted. Some things never go away. I still started today. Everywhere I went, I carried the sense of embarrassment, the sense of shame. I didn't want to open my mouth out of the fear of being ridiculed or laughed at, so I began to draw inwards. I couldn't engage with anyone, so no one could tell how I was truly feeling. And this was when I started to have those thoughts. You know, those really bad thoughts like, why am I here? What's the point of my existence? And you think that as a 12-year-old kid, you wouldn't have a care in the world and that life is so simple and everything's like a fairy tale. But to me, my inability to fit in to make friends, to communicate and express my needs were all very important to me. I just got myself into a, into a state. Then one day it got so bad that 
I resorted to self-harming in the belief that the pain on the outside couldn't get any worse. It was the only way to have, to have some respite for the inner pain that tormented me. And there are people out there, they know who they are, but when I had hit rock bottom, their kind and motivating words brought me back, brought me back from taking my own life. But sadly, many people suffering don't have anyone to talk to. And according to the World Health Organization, approximately one million people commit suicide a year. One million. That's one every 40 seconds. That tells me that since I've been standing on stage, approximately eight people committed suicide. Eight. Let that sink in. But straight out of the pan and into the fire I went. In school, I tried to make up for what I lacked somehow, overcompensate. I attempted to take on the role of class clown in the bid to win friends over. I started doing stupid things so I could be laughed with and not laughed at, and it really went downhill from here. Before I knew it, I was sitting on my mum's bed with her weeping, broken, crying as she read an exclusion letter from school for the fifth time. But that night she told me three things. Three things that I'd like to share with you all. I remember that night so vividly. I remember it like it was yesterday. Number one was, son, having a bad background does not mean your back will always be on the ground. Yeah, this too confused me at first. But the more I repeated it over and over in my head, I began to realize that perhaps she meant just because life beats you down, it doesn't mean that you'll forever be on the ground. That was meant to rhyme, by the way. Just because circumstances come your way, it doesn't mean that you don't have the choice to rise. The number two was, you're perfect. I don't care what anybody else says. You are perfect, Solomon. Now, I know many parents say this to their kids, so this one didn't mean that much to me. <laughs> no, I mean, it didn't. <laughs> no, I'm joking, of course it did. My mom's probably sitting somewhere thinking, did he just say that? I'm going to kill him. But of course it meant a lot to me. I am perfect, right? <laughs> but the one that really got to me was number three. Number three was, I really want you to be a success. Change your life around. Do what you love most and get paid for it. Now, I was about 14 or so, so I stayed out that whole night trying to wrap my head around what my mum had just said. And by 7 a.m. the next morning, I had it. I had it of how I was going to make my mum proud, of how I was going to be a change, do what I love most, and get paid for it. Now, my mother used to give us lunch money. And with the two pounds that she gave me that morning, I set off to the local corner shop and bought two packets of chocolate. Four in each packet, that makes eight Mars bars. I then became known around school as this businessman. I sold all eight at 50 pence each, and the two pounds became four pounds, and then four became eight. And soon I managed to become this walking tart shop selling everything from sweets to chocolate to drinks, and I was making hundreds of pounds. And this is where I started to realize that I was actually good at something. When I was selling, I never stuttered, and if I did, I did rarely. My confidence had grown, and people started to see me as a different Solomon. I learned two things from my experience. Number one was business was my new calling. I wanted to do business. I wanted to be rich. And number two was I couldn't become a millionaire being the school's walking touch shop. Today, I stand in front of you with my own clothing business, working with some of the UK's leading brands. I love what I do, getting to meet different people, building new relationships, and I use all I've encountered to inspire people, young and old, to show them that they too can be the change if they put their mind to it and embrace the things that make them different. Now, I've noticed something, something that you may have not noticed. I'm standing on stage giving a speech about a speech impediment, but you haven't had that speech impediment yet, right? I hope. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm glad I have a stutter. Because if it weren't for it, I don't think I would have ever stopped to reevaluate my life, find out who I really am, what I stand for, and what I want to do in life in order to create positive change. I managed to re-examine my ability to express myself at a pace dictated by me and not by the expectations of others. This was my biggest lesson, that we're all different, but we all want the same thing. We all want to be heard, and we want to be treated fairly. Without it, I don't think I'll be standing up right here, right now, in front of you. My starter has helped, to, has helped me to better relate to the struggles of others. Startering is who I am, and I know that I can never change the fact that I stutter. 
one in a hundred people stutter, and this is what makes me different. Luckily, I only have to meet someone once for them to remember my name, and that's not because I dress well or because I'm handsome. <laughs> right, come on, who, who doesn't remember S -S 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 Solomon? Who doesn't remember Solomon? Now, Ed Sheeran, one of my fellow stutterers, said recently, and I quote, most of the people I knew that were normal in school are all pretty dull right now. They go to the gym four times a week and look at themselves in the mirror a lot, but they don't have a lot to say. Most of the people that are successful start off life as the weird kid with no friends. Now, I don't hold a degree. As a matter of fact, I don't even hold an A-level, but I'm going to teach you something today that they didn't teach me in school. Something that you probably never got taught in school and something that I don't think they ever will teach in school. I believe this thing can change your life forever, depending on how you act upon it. Now listen up. I believe your imperfection is perfect. And I believe you are perfect too. And if you join me in believing this, I believe that you too can make a change. And that surely is an idea worth spreading. Thank you.